Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing C. Jika in a 5 plus 5 game on chess.com. I'm playing white. Let's open with e4, shall we? It's my first video of the month, other than that video I posted on April 1st. And shout out to those of you who sniffed out the April Fool's joke. I feel it has to be said, I am not giving up the Scandinavian defense. That was 100% an April Fool's joke. I do thank you for the nice messages, those who got in touch with me and said, you know, John, I'm sure it was a difficult decision having to give up the Scandi. I uh, just want to know you have my support. Uh, best of wishes for your future opening endeavors. I got a lot of those types of messages. I'm going to play C3 here, by the way, and go for D4 in this Re Lopez. And I do greatly appreciate it. But yes, it was an April Fool's joke. So you Scandi diehards out there, no fear. I I'm continuing to play the opening and analyze it and uh, practice what I preach. So expect more Scandies in the future. <laughs> okay, so in this position here, the bishop on b4 looks a little awkward. I have the nice center. So c3, d4, that is uh, a primary plan in the Brie Lopez. And I was able to execute it pretty smoothly. And I've got these two pawns side by side. I'm thinking of moves like bishop g5 here to hit the queen. Certainly d5, attacking the knight. It would be nice to somehow capitalize on this bishop, but I have learned that you don't want to play d5 too quickly in a lot of these setups. But again, I'm thinking about it because if I could get queen a4 in somewhere, it might be nice. I mean, what if I play queen a4 right here? Idea of bishop a5, I take on c6, and then that bishop well and truly is undefended. This move seems to pose black some problems. I mean, if black has to play a5, then I think it can go a3. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. Black's played very quickly up to this point. That was a minute I spent on that last move. I'm going to chalk part of that up to explaining the April Fool's joke. <laughs> and you know how explaining a joke is. It's always a little cumbersome. But yeah, I think black has played this too quickly and has now found themselves in a difficult position. Is this, is the, is this the Belarus flag? Belarus? Yes, it is. Okay. I know a title player from Belarus, um, Andrei Gorovitz, who became a grandmaster a couple years ago. Super nice guy. Yeah, I don't see a good way out of this for black. A5 is about the only move that makes sense here in order to save the bishop. But this A3 move, crowding the bishop, is going to win a piece. So the damage looks to be done, but we'll see what black comes up with. And I hope you all have been well. Uh, I've been rather busy this month. You know, I'm, I generally stay pretty busy, but I'm going to be moving quite soon. I'm like 95% sure. And I'm only going to be moving about 20 minutes away. But uh, I own this house. I'm going to have to sell it, put it on the market. You know how that process is. It's just time consuming. And moving into the new place, I'm going to be downsizing actually. So I'm downsizing significantly in space. I'm going to go d5 because I want to get this knight away. So that'll be a bit of an adjustment, but I'm looking forward to it. I, I basically have, you know, a fair amount of square footage in my current place that I, I don't need. So it's been nice to have over the past several years, but I'm looking forward to a change. The the area I'm moving into is a little bit more urban and I think more of a happen in place. I currently live in the suburbs and it's just a little, a little, a little too boring sometimes. <laughs> so shouldn't affect much in terms of the videos, but my, my usual setup here will be gone. I mean, the computer is probably the last thing I'm going to pack up or maybe the big King trophy. Actually, that, that'll probably be well and truly the last thing I pack up. But uh, don't expect any changes for about a month or so. Now, if we go back for a second while Black is thinking, Black can get away with this setup, but they often do not take on d4, at least on the Re Lopez. They, they try to maintain the pawn on e5. And now here, I can take on b4, or I can throw this move in first. I think I'm going to play knight takes e5 first. I just like that a little more, so Black doesn't play knight takes f3 with check and double up my pawns. Yeah, now I can take d7 or bishop takes b4. Uh, it doesn't matter a whole lot. I think I'll just take the bishop first. Just so we don't get black uh, 
a free tempo, let's say, with bishop takes d7, queen takes d7. Mm -hmm. c6, let's take that. Okay, and bishop c4 looks normal here. Maybe bishop g5 now, attacking this knight. Note black cannot play f6 because of the pin. And this is going to be another piece. Moving relatively quickly, there's not a whole lot to discuss with those moves. Okay, and my opponent resigns. I'm going to offer a rematch here. Let's see if they accept. That game was pretty quick. And they do accept. Okay, so we're going to get a double header in this uh, climbing the rating ladder video. Okay, now just, just to prove to you that the Scandi is not dead, I'm, I am going to play the Scandinavian. And okay, a lot of people do play e5. But unlike opening such as the French defense of the Karo Khan, the advanced variation is not good against the Scandinavian. And the main reason is black gets to play this c5 move in one move, in one fell swoop, control the d4 square, and black tends to enjoy a pretty easy development here. So knight c6. We'll see if white plays knight f3 or bishop b5. Those are almost always the moves you see here. Yeah, knight f3. Uh, I'm going to go bishop g4, I think. Pin the knight. And I like to develop like e6, knight h6, knight f5. The dark square bishop can come to e7. It's a pretty harmonious setup. We'll play e6. Bishop outside the pawn chain, so you can see the improvement over, let's say, a French defense. Yeah, and look to put this knight on f5. It's often the plan. And black just has great breadth of control here. All those squares on the fourth rank under the pawn's control. I've been tweaking my camera settings a little bit too. Sorry if there's any autofocus issues. I think that's primarily a lighting thing. Again, when I move, I think it's going to get better, but I'm going to continue to play around with things. It shouldn't look quite as yellow as it did in the last video. <laughs> So that seems to have been cleared up a little bit. Okay, so now, yeah, knight f5 I think is fine. Just seeing if there's anything in delaying that knight move. But now let's go ahead and play it. I have given up the bishop pair. I've traded off the light square bishop for the knight on f3, but the position is closed, so this is fine. And I like the harmony I've got going. No bad pieces. Pretty clear path to castle and king side. There's a lot of game left here, but... I, I like my position here on the face, on the face of things. Play bishop e7. Could put a knight on d4 to attack the bishop and also the c pawn, but white is likely going to drop the bishop back to d1, so I don't see any reason to rush that. Now I can play around with bishop h4 if I want. I might even play it here. I'll think about it, because bishop h4, white would have to play queen d1, because queen e2 is going to walk into knight g3. What else is reasonable? I mean, certainly knight h4 if I want to attack the bishop. Uh, knight d4, again, if I want to do this and this. Ah, maybe I play here bishop d1 and then bishop h4. Although white does have queen e3. So it's not quite a queen trap. Feels like there might be some move order that maximizes my advantage here, but let's just pause for a moment. So knight, knight f d4... Bishop d1, bishop h4, queen e3. Hmm. And i got to be careful that knight has a, has a way back if I put it on d4, because c3 could be a threat for white at that stage. So I'm sort of shying away from that. I'm still thinking about the bishop h4 move. Maybe bishop h4 followed by knight g3. It's definitely possible to go after that rook. <laughs> bishop h4, queen d1, knight g3, rook f2, let's say. Uh, knight e4, the rook can always go to g2. Maybe nothing too crazy going on there. It's also just knight h4. Yeah, I'm really not sure. I 
I'm going to go bishop h4. Let's see where that queen goes. I mean, there's a possibility white will blunder, but probably not given how long I thought on that move. Generally, the longer you think at a tactical moment, the more careful your opponent's going to be on their next move. Yeah, so queen d1 is correct. Now, knight g3 was my original intention. Knight e7, I think, is actually still pretty decent, too. Maybe I go from knight e7 followed by g5. That could be pretty interesting. Let's try it. So I put the knight in the bishop's place, and I'm kind of hoping this bishop is helpful over here, penetrating into the position. And this, while kind of crazy looking, it would intend to break up this mini structure that white has going in the center. So I may go for that. Or h5, some undermining move towards the white king. And one of the main reasons I feel comfortable doing this is I have not committed my king yet. I haven't castled. White has, though. White's king is committed to the king side. So the stakes are higher for white in terms of king safety if things get real open on this wing. This is an idea you see in the French defense as well, by the way. Okay, now I'm going to capture. And on bishop takes, I'm going to play knight g6. Hit the bishop and hit the pawn on e5. Now, I, I might not actually want to take it immediately is the thing. Let's say white goes bishop h2 here. Okay, white plays bishop h6. Now I might take it, but I do have to be aware of, let's say, bishop g7. Maybe I throw in this move first, or even bishop g5. Bishop g5 is kind of appealing. Yeah, if I take on e5 immediately, mm, bishop g7... Followed by a capture of one of the knights in queen e2. I have to watch some alignment issues down the file here. So let's let's play this first. Basically, I want to give myself an out to easily castle queenside. At the moment, there's trouble on the e-file. If there's any alignment issue on the e-file, e -file, I want to be able to just whisk my king away to the queenside. So I think from a coordination standpoint, this makes sense. Okay, this, this is interesting. Yeah, I see white's point. So white is going to argue that if I take queen takes, they have bishop takes d5. Ah, but I have queen d4 check. Ah, uh-huh. Let's do this. Let's see if I can get white to blunder. Yeah, and white does. Check. In between move and then pick this up. Ooh, this is not the end of the story, though. Mm, I maybe played that a little too fast, quite honestly. Let's see where white steps here. Uh... I notice now if this knight b5, knight b5 is important, and okay, it's not totally over yet. It's not over yet, Josh. Famous movie, Searching for Bobby Fischer. <laughs> um, yeah, so take knight b5, and on queen e5, there's rook e1, very important. Think, think, think. I kind of have to take it now. I do somewhat, well, really don't know, actually. I don't necessarily have to take. <laughs> There's knight here, for instance. Pulling an audible, but I, hmm. It's kind of a broken plan. Take knight b5. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like what I've done here. This was a pretty big error on my part going down this road. You know, let's go here. I'll be interested to see afterwards um, what the computer thinks of this, but I think I've made a mess of this position. Now if knight b5, queen takes d5 comes with check. So that's no good. If bishop takes b7, rook b8, my idea is to counterattack down here. If bishop takes b7, rook b8, then knight b5, I feel like queen d7, white's position is just a little too loose. But yeah, I'm mostly playing this for coordination purposes. Uh, disallow bishop takes c6, check as an option. Try to better reinforce this. Also maybe stop queen f3. But we're, we're in a melee now. This is unclear.
Also, the time situation, mm, not great for me. I spent a huge chunk of time on two moves. Bishop h4, I spent way too long. That was a minute and 50 seconds. Inadvisable for a 5 plus 5 game to spend uh, a minute 50 seconds on a move. Okay, bishop e4, so my opponent does not capture. Now, what if I step here? Maybe I go after this pawn. Seems kind of threatening, so let's let's do it. And on king h2, maybe knight f4. Go after h3. Trying to make up some time as well. Get a little bit closer on the clock. Uh, bishop f3 is an option too for white, but bishop f3 psychologically is a hard move to play. It also might run into knight h4. Okay, so white does step there. And am I going to continue with knight f4? What else is there? I mean, I could just castle queen side, but I don't want to give white a chance to play something like queen e2. So uh, I think continuing with this move is correct. Try to force white to do this. And then I'd really like to play h5. Bishop f3, h5. I just think knight e4 may be annoying. Knight e4, king e7. Knight, knight e4 would threaten knight f6, by the way. So, oh, white's sacking the exchange. Okay. Yeah, now I think this should be very, very good for me. Up the material. Uh, again, h5 is a consideration. Maybe just castle, though. Just get organized. Don't think sacking on g4 is working quite yet. I could consider it. But risk reward, mm, probably not quite there. Let's just castle. I'm up the material now. Maybe we'll get some sort of queens off situation. White could play queen f1. But let's just secure the king and connect the rooks. f5 is an idea as well here. Yeah, castling is one of those moves that may not be best, but under the circumstances and in general, you're not going to regret castling too often unless you're castling into <laughs> a huge attack or something. Castling is one of those moves that people try to delay oftentimes for uh, invalid reasons, I would say. Okay, queen g3 is a move I'm thinking about. Could just trade. I think queen f1 is a good try, by the way, just defensively. Because... Uh, an end game is not immediately winning or something for me. Although I could trade and play h5. That actually seems pretty good. I think I'm going to do that. Yeah, let's just swap and play h5. Love this knight here on e5. You see how it controls the f7 square? Nicely defends that point. And it can't be kicked away by a white pawn. d4 is very hard to achieve. So loving that knight. Okay, knight b5. Sometimes this type of move is more or less just a random jump with the knight. I can play a6. I can also just take on g4. Let's play a6, though. Let's just see where that knight's going. This is not a threat. So if you move those knights to the fifth rank, you got to have a good reason to do so because they often get kicked by enemy pawns. All right, let's take. Kind of indicates white's going to go here by moving the knight to a3, but... Yeah, white does. They really want at this f7 pawn. But I can trade and play f5. So I think that's what I'll do. We'll see how white plays here, but capturing is the only thing that really makes sense. Pawns on light squares against this bishop. I'm ready to take here. This is looking decisive, but let's stay vigilant. always okay now let's just move the king up and defend I actually wouldn't mind if white takes this pawn because it'll probably make it easier for me to convert uh, if king h2 for instance I might play rook g2 white plays the rook up uh, rook here makes some sense uh, again, moves like rook g2 or rook g4. Let's go rook g4. 
Rook takes h3, and I'll just double. At that point, I'd be threatening a mate in two. This is like an inverted or a shifted 90 degrees blind swine mate, where I would go rook g1 followed by rook g2 with the white rook on h3 blocking the white, white king's escape. And I'm totally happy with the trade here. We're up so much material. Trades are good. So I would suspect white's going to... I was going to say white was probably going to keep the rooks on, but maybe not. Okay. Thanks for the games to my opponent. Yeah, so this second game was, of course, much more competitive than the first one. Let's take a quick look at the first one, followed by the second one. In the first one, it was this Ru Lopez. You know, I think the Ru Lopez is white is a good opening to get into when you uh, maybe have mastered, like, the Italian game or uh, sharper openings in the E4, E5 realm. A lot of you play Scotch Game or Danish Gambit, stuff like that. The Re Lopez can lead to more protracted strategic struggles. The, the tactics, let's say, tend to be a little more delayed in this opening. It's an absolutely fundamental line and, and one that you'll probably enjoy studying. It has a rich tradition. Um, pretty much every top player has played the white and black side of the Re Lopez in their careers. I've even dabbled on the black side of it before. So bishop c5 is not so common. Usually black plays a6 or knight f6. a6 being playable because even though white can take the knight, black takes with the d-pawn. And on knight takes e5, many of you will know that queen d4 wins the pawn back for black due to the dual threats of queen takes e4 and queen takes e5. So bishop c5, there's nothing wrong with it. But black does have to play accurately here because c3 followed by d4, looking for the pawn duo. As I, I often talk about in my videos, I've hammered this into many of your heads. Like, try to establish the pawn duo if you're, if you're able to. Sometimes you can do it and the opponent just allows you to do it because they're sitting back with their pawns in the opening. But this is a, a major plan on the white side of the Re Lopez. And my opponent more or less allowed me to do it effortlessly here. So bishop d7. Let's throw on the opening explorer. Yeah, because this is acceptable. But as I was saying in the game... Black typically tries to hold the e5 stronghold. So bishop b6 is the main move here, as played in 70 plus games. And again, white can try to win a pawn. Bishop takes c6, bishop takes c6, d takes e5. But this pawn on e4 is loose. So I bet if we follow this variation, yeah, there's some trades and black eventually takes. And I guess black is able to avoid disaster down the file because this f pawn is pinned. Black has the bishop pair. I would bet, theoretically, white doesn't have anything here. So that does seem better, but, you know, a lot of people's instincts is going to be to take. But I just think after C takes D4, look, looks like the stats bear this out as well. White's doing well here. And how this bishop B4 move it was played in a few games. And I played uh, queen A4 at this point, didn't I? Makes me wonder if black actually has a defense, because queen a4 has not been played here, at least in the chess.com database. And this, I'm sure this position has been reached beyond what's indicated in the chess.com database, but I wonder if there is a defense after the queen a4 move. And remember, I spent some time here, because it just seemed to me that this was worthy of punishment. You know, had black played bishop b6, black is solid for the moment, but they lack space. So likely I would have built around my center, start developing my pieces, knight c3, uh, maybe bishop g5 if black develops the knight, kind of menacing some stuff here. Maybe black goes knight g7 instead. You you often want to look for a moment, a good moment to push one of these pawns, but I would probably build up a little bit more, bishop e3, rook c1, moves like that. So queen a4, does black really have something here to hold? I'm not seeing it. The threat is bishop takes c6 followed by queen takes b4. And it doesn't matter if the black bishop flees there as well because it's a similar problem. And I mentioned in the game, a5 runs into a3. And black runs out of space with this bishop. So since we've kind of thought about this, let's throw on the engine a little selectively here. No, queen a4 is plus 3.5 minimum for white. So yeah, that's... That's the move. I don't think we're going to get anything better than that. 
Queen b3 is also good. Eh, a little less direct, though. Yeah, Queen a4 is the top move. That's interesting, right? That white hasn't played this. I wonder how strong these players are. It doesn't say. But I would be curious if some top, you know, master level player, let's say, has missed Queen a4, the strength of it here. This, these might be somewhat lower rated games. But okay, an idea worth remembering. And after this, knight g e7. Decent attempt. That allows black to try to replace the the knight with the other knight but d5 really shatters black's coordination and this knight's attacked which is in turn supporting this and there's no way out here this is the threat to take um black could maybe try something like a6 here but it's gonna lose a piece one way or the other let's say take on c6 take b5 gets a little confusing but i can even throw in the capture on d7 first and then take here or if queen takes even the rook hangs it's too much of a domino effect that's going against black here so black played knight e5 but this was just a cleanup job after this black did lose another piece at the end rook e8 would have hung on a little bit but um the position is losing so do remember that from the back from the black side if you're an e4 e5 player if i flip this around real quick you generally do not want to play e takes d4 unless you have immediate counterplay. Okay, now the immediate counterplay would come into play in, let's say, a position such as this in the Italian game. I have a video on my channel, it's called Know Your Joko Piano, where I go over this line. This is one line where white ambitiously tries d4, and the only reason black is willing to capture like this is not to play bishop b6 or bishop e7 or something. We don't want to let those pawns stick around. It's because black can play bishop b4 check, often with knight takes e4 on the way, if white blocks with the knight using the pin, or on bishop d2, there's lines like this, for instance, where black punches in the center, counterattacks with d5, and generates counterplay. So in short, if you are going to allow this from the black side, your opponent to get those pawns, or even with colors reversed, like you got to have some counter argument. Otherwise, you're giving up too much space and too much of the immediate center which is these four squares. All right, let's switch to the other game. Now this was tougher. Okay, I mentioned uh, rumors of the Scandinavian's death and me giving up the Scandinavian have been greatly exaggerated on my part. <laughs> so I'm here to tell you that, no, it's, it's alive and well, it's just fine. Now, contrary to popular belief, I do not recommend the Scandi to everyone. If you're a beginning player, you're getting your feet under you in chess, the Scandinavian is not the defense I would go to play. And even for those of you who are experienced, I mean, this is an opening that uh, you have to want to play, and it maybe shouldn't even be your only line against e4. Probably shouldn't. So I do think it's it's underrated, but I just want to say that. It's not, not something you should jump into just because John says that he likes the Scandinavian. <laughs> I'm just one guy, one content creator. Uh, if you're starting out, I think e4, e5 is the way to go. You could maybe throw in the Sicilian. Uh, and if you want to branch out even further, I think the Karakhan is also a good opening, uh, fundamentally, looking for d5, where you don't suffer any perhaps bad pieces like the French. The French is the third most popular defense against e4, but I've never really understood why, to be honest, because to me, the French looks like a bad version of the Karakhan, where you're challenging the pawn on e4, but you have this bad bishop blocked by the pawn that you got to struggle with for the rest of the game. I'm sure some French purists will disagree, though. <laughs> but anyways, if you're a beginner, eh, more stick to the classical stuff, e5 or the Sicilian, where you're controlling d4 in some way. Um, but in this game, on d5, taking the pawn is, is the really the only try for an advantage for white. But my opponent played e5, and we saw elements of the Karo Khan, the French here, but good versions of both. There's a line in the Karo Khan where, <clears throat> so in the advanced variation, where after d5, white pushes e5, and black actually voluntarily plays c5 here, moving the c pawn again uh, twice in the first three moves. And there's quite a bit of theory surrounding this line. So if that's the case there, and there's theory that backs this up, then of course playing c5 on move two in one go, making use of the double pawn move, must be good in this position. We're trying to control d4. We're not going to allow white to set up d4 unopposed. As a, you know, let's say something like e6 in contrast, like this would transpose to the French defense. 
Bishop f5 is another good move here, by the way. You can also do this. I cover both those options. I mentioned both those options and cover some lines in my Scandinavian course on chessable. So c5, f4, supporting the center. Yeah, now white could play bishop b5. That's sometimes a move you see. And I usually meet that with bishop d7. This always contains a sneaky threat. Kudos to those of you who uh, can spot this threat. But for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, shout out to Agad Mator. Uh, if white plays a routine developing move here, like knight f3, you can play knight takes e5 and unveil the attack on the light square bishop. And on, knight, on bishop takes d7 check, black plays knight takes d7 in reply and saves the knight. Those of you who do play the French defense, you will know that trick well, or you should know that trick. It happens all the time in the advanced French. Uh, no joke. I have a couple students who play the French. I've seen that that trick probably a hundred times without exaggeration in some of these students' games over the years. <laughs> so that's how I would handle the bishop coming to b5. But white played knight, knight f3, and I decided to pin. I like this. I think the pieces just slot in really well for black here. This bishop coming out, navigating this kingside knight to the f5 square. If bishop b5 now... I think black could ignore it and play a move like e6. Also, queen b6 makes a lot of sense. Attack the bishop, defend the knight. No problem either way. But white played bishop e2. I'm going to fast forward a little bit. I don't think I have anything to add to these moves. Yeah, and I, I think I just spend way too much time at this moment on g4, deciding between probably relatively equal options here. I mean, in hindsight, most everything looks looks okay. Knight h4, bishop h4. And I was mulling over the ramifications of this. It's kind of a tempting count, uh, double attack here. Because white probably wants to keep their light square bishop. But the thing I didn't like is that c3 could be a threat in the future. I guess I have the b5 square to get back. But if that knight goes to the d4 square and takes away the other knight square and doesn't have a way back... Mm, I'm not sure. And I got a little bit too carried away in looking at stuff like this where the queen is almost trapped, but there doesn't seem to be anything concrete. Like knight here, hitting this, there's always knight a3. Just not quite seeing it. So I like what I did in the game, bishop h4 and knight e7 with this g5 idea in mind, but I just wish I would have done that faster. And I think even this is totally fine. Let's see what the computer thinks, though. Yeah. All these moves are good for black. Even the knight fd4 move it actually gives this as a possibility, h5. <clears throat> and again, black is willing to play this way because white's king is in the line of fire. The engine even thinks that I could potentially give up the knight on d4, play for an attack. This would be a nice, exciting line. This does look pretty good with all white's pieces on the back rank, I must admit. But wasn't really looking at that. Okay, so, yeah, all decent. Bishop h4, queen d1. Again, queen e2 would run into knight g3 with the fork. So that's no good. Yeah, knight g3 is fine. Knight g3 followed by f6. Another undermining pawn move. So hit the rook, do this. Yeah, knight g3 looks, looks excellent here now that I look at it again with fresh eyes. And if we can break this structure that white has, I can easily see how black's pieces and activity really start to show themselves. Okay, but I went for this. G5, yep, same principle. Another top move here is H5. Trying to attack with the H-pawn, not worrying about takes because that would give up the F5 square. We can jump right back in and just in general, that open line towards the white king is going to be a problem. But g5, I like it. I think this is all fine, but I let my guard down a little bit. You know, I am just as guilty as any of you out there. Uh, any any player is. Like, we let our guard down sometimes. Sometimes in chess. Okay, things I can take immediately. You know, I, I was a little bit worried about this, I gotta say. Some lines such as this, where white might play queen e2 in the end, and I was talking about this alignment. Like, let's say I move the knight. It would allow a capture here. Let's say bishop takes d5 using the pin. <clears throat> the engine is not at all concerned. It just says queen g5. Aha. Uh -huh. 
defending the knight, and that bishop is, is handy, controlling the e1 square. Okay, so white can't easily move this knight from e5. Yeah, I could see that being good. It's always easier in hindsight, right? Whether you're running the engine or analyzing without the pressure of playing, it's always easier. Still, though, I don't mind this move, bishop g5, because statically, the position is great for black. I mean, that pawn is not running away. Okay. Yeah, and now I think I just got a little too clever with the queen takes f6, queen d4 idea. And <clears throat> I say that because I, I was employing some gamesmanship here. I was trying to get white to blunder bishop takes d5 by moving faster. I thought I had spotted just the refutation of a somewhat natural looking continuation. And white very well may have missed the knight b5 idea. Maybe white wasn't looking at it at all. I think there's a very, very good possibility that's the case, just judging by the speed at which white played bishop takes d5. But that doesn't matter. I, I didn't do my due diligence here, and that's the, the only important thing. As in, I didn't fully vet this continuation. So the fact that white also fully didn't vet this is irrelevant. Because th this, if this were a classical game, this is something that very easily could have got me in trouble. And it almost did in this game. So I shouldn't take that pawn. Queen d6, queen c7. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I would have played one of those moves. Engine likes them. They, they just make a lot of sense. Let's say queen d6. I like that move a lot because that threatens queen g3 and also just makes way for castling. We don't have to go after the pawn. And the engine thinks this is substantially better for, for black. And I'd say that's mainly due to the, the king safety issue that white experiences, just the chronic king safety issue. My king's going to be very safe over on the queen side. Um, yeah, black's just going to have basically a free shot at white's king coming up. Lots of attacking moves. Okay, so queen takes f6, bishop takes d5. Yeah, and now white... Okay, unless the engine comes up with something here. Yeah, white... White is probably doing fine unless I can take on d5. I kind of felt that same way in the game. Okay, you know, I saw this line. This is the reason why I didn't play this. E takes d5 because a knight b5, threatening this and threatening this. And I can't move my queen to cover this square effectively because queen f4, that's covered by the rook on f1. Queen e5 walks into the alignment. We always have to be aware of the e-file alignment. This happens so often uh, in a huge portion of your games. This will be some sort of theme, either directly or indirectly. So, yeah, I did look at queen g7. I don't remember if I was articulating this in the game. With the idea of maybe um, getting two minor pieces for the rook when the dust settles. There's was like queen f3 that could cause issues. This is still a little bit loose. But you know why I didn't like this is I thought white could play knight d6 here instead. Ah, okay. The engine is ruthless. King d7 takes and just king takes d6. Okay, and the engine's going to argue that when the dust settles here, I have a rook and two minor pieces for the queen. Okay, that is compelling, but... <laughs> Yeah, not something I wanted to allow. But I, I could see how this is the best line. I definitely like that line more than what I did, which was, what, knight c to e5? Yeah, and here taking on b7 is crucial. So I was kind of daring white to capture this pawn, and I was looking for counterplay here. And the engine's not convinced, though. Ooh, is rook takes b2 bad for some reason here? How is white going to hurt me against that? Just knight e4, threatening here. Yeah, the position does look kind of loose, I gotta say. Queen c, whoops, queen c1. Maybe looking for queen g5, yep. Yeah. The emperor has no clothes. I could see how my king is just exposed here in the center. This is already plus three and a half. So, bishop takes b7 seems best. White played bishop e4 on the other hand. And here the engine likes h5. I played queen e3. It's also... So that's fine. Mm. Yeah, queen e3 is kind of a nice move because it highlights the Achilles heel of white's position here. Which is that h-pawn. I mean, the defense around the king is already pretty, pretty scarce. And this hits that pawn really nicely. Yeah, bishop g2. I don't know if I saw bishop g2 in the game. But white didn't play it. White played king h2 instead. 
and my attack started building steam. So on bishop h2, I probably would have castled here. Engine wants to play h5 or knight f4. Again, I kind of like castling just, just to coordinate. But um, yeah, bishop g2 is definitely the best move. After this, it gets tougher. Maybe still not quite too late to play this, but then king h2 looks looks less necessary. Yeah, castles, and this is already tough for uh, for white to defend. Mm, there's some nice tactics the engine's pointing out. Like if queen e1, trying to trade queens at this point, knight takes g2, and that one tempo white lost by playing king h2 can run into tactical problems. Knight takes g4. Hard to meet here. Defends the queen, ready to take and, and fork. And if takes, takes, black's just crushing, just mating, actually. Queen h6 coming. Yeah, yeah, this is where the position starts to slide downhill for white. So I think probably around here, bishop takes b7, best move. And after bishop e4, queen e3, white has to play bishop g2 to have a chance. Yeah, in the game, white did that. What else was I thinking of here? Was there another move? Uh, maybe I did mention bishop g2. I can't remember. But yeah, that looks to be the only way to keep the position together. Rook f3 loses the exchange. But I, I guess after this, the attack is probably decisive already. So king h2, I think, is probably the real culprit. Okay. Well, I think I might have mentioned bishop f3. I'm having a hard time remembering, but yeah. Bishop f3 or bishop g2. Yep, and after winning the exchange, okay, the engine, again, brute force. It just wants me to go for the throat here. Knight takes g4, queen g3. Yeah, knight takes g4 is minus nine and a half. <laughs> the engine just sees that this is a, a winning attack. I didn't even want to have to calculate this. So just castle. In a longer game, I probably would have looked at that, spent some time, but I had already burned quite a bit of time up to this point. Yeah, and swap tier. Again, there's other ways to play. Queen h6 maybe. That does look awesome actually because uh, white's kind of caught on these files. Knight takes g4 or rook takes g4 is an idea. But no harm in playing this endgame too. h5. Finally play this h5 move. Yeah, and... Hard to offer white a ton of advice at this point. You know, stuff like takes. I was going to go here. This knight's doing a great job again. But I I think you should really avoid moves like knight b5. That can easily be kicked back with pawns. The knight's just not stable there. If my pawn was on a5 or something, maybe. But um, it still wouldn't have much of a threat. Oh, and this is just cleaning up. Ah, rook h8 better here. Didn't even look at that move. That looks to take the rook, or take the pawn with the rook rather than the pawn. Because when I take this way, white's kind of hiding in the shadow of that black pawn, if that makes sense. But the position is overwhelming here. Just got to avoid major blunders. Still play aggressively, but also look for trades like this. Yeah. Easy win here in the endgame. I can start bringing up my kings, advancing the pawn. White's cut off. If white had avoided a rook trade, you know, something like this, I can... Um, Probably eventually force a rook trade, to be honest. But I can also start slowly bringing up my king. Uh, what would I do, maybe? I think I would play maybe this move to start. Uh, or king e7. Yeah, maybe, maybe something like this. And then start bringing the king a little bit closer. e5, e4. White's cut off. Don't think I would check unless there was some sort of force mating sequence. But white's almost going to run out of moves here soon. And just gradual progress being made maybe try to force a rook trade on the h file but even that's unnecessary okay so a couple of instructive games there that first game getting in c3 d4 and then taking advantage of that bishop b4 hopefully you picked up a thing or two and this game far more competitive i let my guard down and didn't fully vet this sequence i spotted a good idea and i went for it in a longer game this could have got me punished um, so there were better ways to play that cleaner ways and I think for white I just am, am skeptical of this setup in e5 in general against the Scandinavian I personally think black is even slightly slightly better after this already because that pawn on e5 can be a liability 
Uh, I definitely wouldn't have played like uh, G4 as white. I think that's a little too aggressive. White should probably look to develop their their pieces over here a little bit quicker. Even H3, I think sometimes that's, that can be a bad move in these structures because it, it creates some weaknesses on that side of the board. You really got to be careful about moving lots of pawns in front of your king. And in this game, white moved all three of the king side pawns, H, G, and F. Okay, as always, thank you guys for watching. I can tell I haven't recorded for a while, just like talking specifically to the camera. I've been streaming on Twitch, but I haven't recorded <clears throat> YouTube specific only. And I can tell that because my voice is going a little bit after, uh, wow, 45 minutes. So uh, thanks again for those of you who stick around for the entirety of the video or a lot of it. I try to give you as many takeaways as possible because uh, I want you guys to improve. So then thanks again for all the nice comments on the April Fool's video. Keep scanning if it's in your repertoire. <laughs> and um, I'll see you guys again soon as I'm working on the move. So take care, guys.